I request everybody to be upstanding as we pray. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we stand before your very holy presence at this hour as we express our deep gratitude to you for every blessing you have continued to grant upon each one of us since this meeting began a week ago. And Lord, this evening we are privileged again to find our way to your very holy presence. And just before we begin this meeting, we would like to invite you in our hearts. We would like to invite your presence amidst of us. All that shall be said and be done may bring glory and honor to your name only. Before us, Lord, you have a messenger whom you have graciously honored by giving him the message to pass across to the world. And this our Lord, we would like to surrender him to you. Please, Lord, touch his lips. Please, Lord, place your words upon his brain and give him ability to communicate your word. When these things are said and done, may honor and glory be given unto you only. The topic that is before us is a very important topic that, Lord, we need your guidance. We need your understanding through the power of the Holy Spirit that we may understand how to deal, how to confront with this topic of cancer. Oh Lord, may your spirit guide your son and be with him as he begins this meeting. May you lead him up to the end and may us that are gathered before the screen and in this congregation, we may have an opportunity to get these insights and apply it into our individual lives and see how we can be helpful people. Please, Father God, may you be with us now and bless us because we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Well, hello and welcome back. It is, again, a privilege to be with you. And it's a real privilege to be sharing with you some of these health tips that will take you throughout your life. We've been looking at this life colors. We've been going through the different colors. We've done gray. We've done purple. We've done blue. Today we're going to do a very important topic, cancer. It is the green topic. And I am sure that all of us, you at home, wherever you may be, you know somebody who's had cancer. But I want to take you back to the 1970s and the Premier of China was dying from liver cancer. Now, he did something very interesting. As he was dying, he wanted to find out why are people in China dying from cancer? Very good, on your deathbed you want to find out how can he help the rest of his nation. So what he did, he did a survey right the way throughout China. And you know, one of the great things about having a totalitarian system, everybody had to answer the questionnaire. No one was allowed to say no. So they went throughout the whole of China. This is the largest study that's ever been done on human beings about health. It's so big that it took over 880 million people were involved. The study was so large that over 650,000 researchers were used. I mean, if you had a study that just had 650,000 subjects, that would be big. But this was the number of researchers. And what did they find out? They discovered that when you go throughout China, there are different rates of cancer. 
in adjacent places. Some places had incredibly high rates of cancer like we have in the West, in America, in Europe, like one in three, one in two. But right next door, people had very low rates of cancer, almost no rates of cancer. One in 100,000, one in 200,000. And they scratched their heads and they said, but well, what is going on? They did more experiments, more tests, and they discovered something. The richest parts of China had the highest rates of cancer. The poorest parts of China had the lowest rates of cancer. They couldn't understand that. They kept doing research work and they came up with some conclusions. Now this is the China study, you may have heard of it. As I say, the biggest study ever done on human health. And what they discovered, the, the take home message was, the more animal fat, the more protein from animals, the greater the risk of cancer. Now here's something that may surprise you, especially cow's milk. I'll just let that sink in. So cow's milk, they discovered, caused cancer. Wow. Well, let me tell you, all of the researchers didn't believe it because they're all meat eaters, milk drinkers. So they did more experiments. They said, well, look, let's try out this test. And they tested a load of, monk, of, of mice. They got a thousand mice. They injected them with something called aflatoxin. This is a, a peanut toxin. If you inject a mouse with aflatoxin, all of them will get liver cancer. So they injected them, they all got liver cancer, they all died. Now, the, mice, the mice's diet, or the rat's diet, is about 20% milk protein. So what they then did, they got a new strain of, of rats, they reduced the milk protein to below 5%, they injected them with the aflatoxin, none of them got cancer. Okay, I want to make sure you understood this. They inject them with something that will definitely cause cancer. They lower the amount of milk protein in their diet. None of them got cancer. So they, it, it verified that something in milk, and they, and they discovered it was casein, the protein in milk, literally promotes cancer. Now, let's go back to some basic. What is cancer? Um, I wonder if anybody can guess how many cells we have in the human body, roughly. Shout out a figure. How many, how many cells do you think we have in the human body? Two? Did somebody say two? No, no. A few billion? A bit higher. We have, on average, 50 trillion cells. 50 trillion cells. Each cell has a copy of our DNA. In fact, each of those 50 trillion cells, if you unwind the DNA, it's about two meters long. Each of those strands of DNA have about 50,000 genes on them. So think about it. You have 50 trillion cells, each with 50,000 genes. If one of those genes goes wrong, and it's highly likely, right, with that high number, if one of them goes wrong, you can get uncontrolled growth and that is what cancer is. That cell will continue to divide and divide and divide until you get a lump and then it becomes a cancer. That's exactly what cancer is. Here's something that may shock you. All of us have cancer. Everybody listening at home, everybody in here, we all have cancerous cells in our body. Now the reason why we don't have the disease is because our immune system is so well put together that it will discover any emergent cancer and destroy it very quickly. That's the beauty of having a fantastic immune system. That's why we have to protect it. Okay, I think of it like this. Cancer is just one battle lost after millions of battles won. Every single day you are fighting cancer, but your immune system destroys it and takes it away. Right, I like to think of cancer as a weed growing in the garden. You don't want it there, but how do you get rid of it? One of the best ways to get rid of it is to stop it from feeding, to starve the cancer. Now, how do you starve cancer? Well, what does cancer like to feed on? Anybody know? 
I hear the word sugar. You're absolutely right. Sister Finley was telling us about all the junk food. All of that junk which is rapidly high in sugar, loads of refined sugar, that just feeds cancer each and every day. If we eliminate the refined sugars, you can eliminate some of the causes, some of the triggers for cancer. What else does it like to feed on? Look at this. Animal fat. We said that in the beginning. This is a part of the study, the China study. When you look at the graph, this is a huge study because it takes in populations. And on the, on the x-axis, you can see that as the animal fat increases on the y-axis, the rate of breast cancer increases too. So you can see that correlation line. Right at the top in the corner, you've got New Zealand, heavy meat eaters, heavy loads of animal fat. Right down at the bottom, you've got Thailand, El Salvador, very little animal fat intake very low rates of breast cancer. So it's related. The more animal fat you have in your body, the higher your risks of breast cancer. And I can guarantee it's for similar cancers too. Colon cancer. Here's another graph. Looks almost exactly the same. The more meat protein you consume, the greater the risk of colon cancer. And if you haven't been watching, most universities are coming out with studies now that the more red meat you eat, you increase your risk of bowel cancer. In fact, in Great Britain a few years ago, they did a study that showed just 30 grams of red meat per week. I don't know, I think that's about two rashes of bacon. Most people eat more than that. 30 grams of red meat per week increases your risk of bowel cancer by 60%. So some people say, well, I'll just reduce my amount of red meat. Okay. But if you know something causes cancer, why don't you just get rid of it completely? You know, if you told me that beans cause cancer, I wouldn't just say, I'll reduce them, I would eliminate them. They don't. They do exactly, exactly the opposite. Beans actually help us eliminate cancer from our system. Look at this map of the world, breast cancer. Now, when you see this map, the red areas have the highest rates of cancer. Then you go down to the orange, then to the yellow, then to the pale green, and then to the dark green. So the dark green has very low levels of breast cancer. Now what do you notice about this graph? Oh, or map of the world. The wealthiest countries in the world have the highest rates of breast cancer. You know, there are countries all, there are people in all countries all over the world trying to get to these wealthy countries, not realizing that when you get there, your rate of breast cancer goes straight up. That's right. It doesn't matter. It's not genetic. If you go from Africa or India, which has low rates of breast cancer, and you place yourself in London or Washington, your rate and chance of breast cancer goes straight up. It's not genetic. It's all about lifestyle. And if you see what we eat in the West, you'll know exactly why. Here's a question for you. Is this natural? Is this natural? No, it's not natural. You see, cow's milk was designed to make a little calf into a big cow. It's got all the proteins and hormones necessary. Um, if we were really supposed to drink milk, we probably should be drinking milk from our mother's breast into adulthood. None of us are doing that. However, however, if you go to a certain place in London, it's called Covent Garden, you can buy some ice cream from a lady who makes it from her breast milk. Anybody volunteering to try that? No, no, no. No, we wouldn't even think about it. That's a little bit off, isn't it? But it doesn't make sense to me that we would say that's a little bit disgusting, but we'll take it from another animal, from a different species. There's no animal in the wild that drinks milk into adulthood. There's no other animal in the world that drinks the milk from another animal. Only we do that. And we're the ones who are suffering from cancer and diabetes, and we wonder why. I don't know if you've ever heard of this lady, Angelina Jolie. She's a famous movie star. Well, she had, well, she went to her doctor, and her doctor says, you have the gene for breast cancer. Some people who have breast cancer have the gene for it. We're at about 5 to 10% of people who have breast cancer. So her doctor told her this, and so she said, look, I don't want to get breast cancer, 
So what I'm going to do is have a mastectomy. I'm going to remove my breast before the cancer comes. I guess you can understand that. But what her doctor didn't know, and this is what I would have told her, is that there have been studies done for years about breast cancer and the gene for breast cancer. And look at this. It says that women who, were, who have the defective gene for breast cancer, if they were born before 1940, their risk of breast cancer by the age of 50 is 24 percent. If they are, were born after 1940, it goes up to 67 percent. Why should that be? Any ideas? Do you know at home? Look, the most important thing, what, what is that date, 1940, by the way? What was going on then? The Second World War. So this was a British study. I don't know if you've ever seen pictures of Britain during the 1940s, but Britain looked very poor. It was so poor, we had to ration our food. You could not have loads of sugar and chocolate and cakes. It was just ration. You could have, probably have about this much sugar for a whole month. There was no obesity. There was no breast cancer. There was no diabetes. There was no high blood pressure. It's only after when I, I see children now going to school, they've got a big can of Coke in the hand and a big bar of chocolate in the other hand, and that's what's increased our risk of breast cancer and other cancers. Look, I'm not suggesting that we need another war to get rid of cancer. I'm not saying that. Please don't quote me. But what I am saying is if we just ate a little bit poorer, do you know what I mean? Like the poor people of China who didn't get the cancer, but the rich people of China had the cancer. Just because it's available, we don't have to have it. Um, when I go to the supermarkets these days, most of the aisles of the supermarket, I can't eat or drink anything. The only ones I've got are the, is the water and the fruit and vegetables. That's about it. Everything else is just temptation for me. I told you about my sugar addiction, you know, but you're not judging. Fantastic. Okay. Moving on, how do I prevent cancer? That's what we want to know, right? Because you know people who've got cancer, had cancer, how can I prevent myself from getting it? Well, you've got to listen to Sister Finley, you've got to listen to Pastor Mbago, what, what they've been saying over the past few days. Look, exercise, drink the water, have a healthy plant-based diet. Yesterday, Pastor Mbaga, maybe I should call him Dr. Mbaga, he um, was talking about stress. If you deal with your relationships, bringing down your cortisol levels. Cortisol wipes out the immune system. I said to you that it's the immune system that picks up cancer early. Now, if you're having arguments every night, did you know that your immune system just gets wiped out completely for 24 hours? Now imagine if you're having these arguments every single night. All of that stress, your immune system goes to sleep. All of these cancers that would have been picked up are now growing and growing until you have the disease. So, what can I do? I would add to that healthy lifestyle. For all of us, we should be on a high level of vitamin D3 especially we as black people, even though we're living in a hot country here, we should have high doses of vitamin D3 because most people get vitamin D from the sun. The sun hits the skin, converts it, converts cholesterol into vitamin D, and then it does all of its good work. But most of us don't spend a lot of time in the sun. We go from our air-conditioned home to our air-conditioned car to our air-conditioned office. We're not out in the sun enough. We need high levels of vitamin D3. And I would also add to that a minimal level of vitamin C, two grams a day. So adding to the healthy lifestyle, all that has been talked about since we've been here, the water, the exercise, the diet, you need to add these things to improve your chances of not getting cancer. What on earth do I do if I have cancer? Here's the key. And if you know somebody with cancer, this is quite relevant to you. The first thing I will say to you is get some treatment. I've told you over the past few days that, look, you can reverse type 2 diabetes. You can reverse high blood pressure heart disease. I'll tell you later that you can reverse arthritis and many diseases by following simple steps. With cancer, yes, you'll need 
lifestyle treatment, but you will need hospital treatment too. Right? You will need to see a professional. If you have a tumor, it will need to be removed. So don't just think, oh, well, I'll just go it alone. Don't go it alone, get treatment. But be active in the treatment. When the doctor says to you, this is what we want to do, ask questions about it. Doctor, what is the chances that it will improve if I take this treatment? And if I don't take the treatment, what are the chances that it will get worse? They will have those numbers for your cancer for you. And if they don't have it, tell them to find out before you make the decision. Sometimes they talk about chemotherapy. Very few people want chemotherapy. Well, always ask them, is it possible to have immunotherapy? Always ask that question. Immunotherapy has been developed over the last 10 years. And what it does, it uses your own immune system to target the cancer. It has very few, if any, side effects because it's using your own elements. So think about it. Don't just accept everything. Absolutely be questioning. Now people say, but what about prayer and going the natural way? I get this a lot. And I, I do want you to understand me. God answers prayer, doesn't he? He can cure any disease. He's done it and he is doing it. Some of you may have testimonies. But what we shouldn't be is arrogant enough to say how he's going to cure us. So unless God has told you exactly how he's going to cure you, he's told you personally, it may be that through the doctors and the medication, that's how you're going to be cured. Now, just in case you think I'm just talking off my own head, do you remember that King Hezekiah? Remember Hezekiah? He was a good king. God sent Isaiah to him to say, look, get your affairs in order, King Hezekiah. You are going to die. Not good news. Hezekiah wasn't happy about it. He turned his face to the wall, wept, prayed to the Lord. And as Isaiah was on his way out of the palace, he was told by God, go back and give him a new message. He said, look, I'm going to give you 15 more years. You are going to live. You are healed. You remember that story, right? Okay. Now, if God says you're healed, you're healed, right? He doesn't have to do anything. He just speaks it and it's done. But what happened to Isaiah? Isaiah said to him, look, take a lump of figs. So he took, so they took, laid it on the boil, and then King Hezekiah recovered. So God said he was healed, but then he used the medicine of the day to actually heal him. It didn't just come just by prayer. And that may be the same in your situation too. So unless God tells you, this is how I'm exactly going to heal you, don't be presumptuous to think, I'm just going to do it by prayer. I don't need any other help. So I would always say to you, look, it's not just treatment. You must have lifestyle involvement as well. So if you have an active cancer, Rather than do the 10,000 a day of vitamin D, it needs to go up to 20,000. Vitamin C IV, very good if you take it to 10, 10, or 10 to 20 grams per day. These things, if you're doing all of these things with the lifestyle and all of that, you're doing the basics that will help your body with cancer. And it won't interfere with any of the medication you're having, I can guarantee that. Now, if you have to go down the chemotherapy route, and, you know, it's never a great thing to have chemotherapy, but what you are able to do to reduce all of those side effects is to fast. It has been shown that if you fast for two days before, one day after your chemotherapy session, the chemotherapy targets specifically the cancer and leaves your other cells alone. The symptoms, the side effects of chemotherapy is when it hits the good cells, like your gut and your hair and everything starts to fall out. So if you fast before, what it does is slow down the metabolism of your normal cells. Your cancerous cells, they keep racing along and they keep feeding. So it will pick up the chemotherapy a lot quicker and it will destroy the cancer with fewer and fewer side effects. I, um, I had a wonderful text only last year from a lady who eight years ago 
came to me with a problem with her diagnosis of breast cancer. She came to me and she said, Dr. Chidi, I've got breast cancer, but I just want to go the natural route. I convinced her that probably that wasn't advisable. What you need to do is definitely improve your lifestyle, but also get the hospital treatment too. She sent me a text and it basically said to, to me that I'm so grateful that I'm alive today because I came to you and I got that advice. When I started my cancer journey, I was with several other women who decided to go the natural route. They are all dead. I am alive. It is important that we do both together. The hospital treatment on its own is not that great, I'll be honest with you, on its own. But hospital treatment plus lifestyle adjustment can allow you to really have the best possible chance of conquering cancer. And lastly, what we have to talk about is what we've been talking about throughout the week, practicing peace and love. Look, you can be eating the best food, doing all the exercise, but if your body is generating all of these stress hormones, you are putting yourself at risk. We're going to have to learn to love. We're going to have to learn to forgive. We're going to have to learn to live and be in peace. If you're able to do all of those things, you are dramatically increasing your chances of survival of cancer and preventing cancer coming in the first place. What I want to do is just pray for you as I end. Father in heaven, we're so grateful that you have the gift of healing. Father, everything we do, everything we have is yours. But Lord, there are people today suffering and worried about cancer. We're asking for your divine healing hand to be upon them today. May the words of your healing go out to all those family members, colleagues, that may need your help today. Lord, we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen.